What's up everybody, it's Joe here and Sony has just wrapped up 2013 PlayStation E3 presentation and uh, there were a lot of surprises, a lot of definitely good surprises and a lot of good information that came out of it. Um, one of the big ones being the price point, uh, the game list and then a few other little details that they came out with was pretty good and got some round of applause. So I'm going to dive into everything, talk about everything that stood out to me, things I did and didn't like. So I'm going to start right from the beginning. So they kicked it off focusing a little bit on the Vita, and I think the big takeaway from the Vita is that they will be coming out with Telltale Games, the Walking Dead series, and there'll be new additions to the series that'll be coming out on the Vita. And then they went to the PS3, which is going to be going out with a bang. Um, you know, they opened up with The Last of Us, which comes out on Friday, June 14th. Nothing needs to be said about that game, you know, that is, you already probably seen the reviews, and they showed the trailer, I was half looking because again, I'm trying to uh, avoid as much as possible just so I could be surprised with every single thing in the game. But yeah, nothing needs to be said about that. Um, they had a trailer for Rain, which I hadn't really seen much on before. It was a brief trailer, but it was enough to pique my interest. So I don't know exactly what that game is about, but that's something I keep my eye on. And then Beyond Two Souls, that's the other game along with The Last of Us that I've been Really looking forward to coming out this year. Heavy Rain was one of my favorite games, and um, I like that company a lot. You know, I like what they're trying to do with gaming. So, Beyond Two Souls, um, that's something, again, I've been looking forward to that. Now, this trailer that they showed was different. This one kind of, it went a different direction. It looked, it looked like it had more elements of action um, than the previous trailer has shown. So, I'm not sure exactly. Now, I'm even more interested because I'm not sure exactly what direction that they'll go, but I'm thinking it's going to be more similar to the first trailer that came out, more in the heavy rain uh, element of gaming um, with that interactive experience. So, yeah, that's another one that I'm still excited about. Then they also showed a trailer for Gran Turismo 6. I've never really been a big fan of Gran Turismo, but I know they have a huge following. Um, the graphics look really clean, as always, so that should be a good game. And then Arkham Origins coming this fall. It looks legit, you know, and it probably it may be better than the first two, which were two really good games. So, so that was PS3. So then they moved on to the PS4, and upon initially seeing it, um, I didn't think it was visually appealing. In my personal opinion, um, I'm not loving it just yet, but it's getting a lot of love on Twitter for the sleek design. So um, yeah, I think it may grow on me, and I like the fact that it could go horizontal or vertical, just like the PS2. So that's fine. Um, then they, they kicked it off focusing on the TV and the social aspects, which I didn't pay a lot of attention to. Um, you know, it all looks like it'd be cool, and once I experience it, I'll probably understand a little bit more. But I was looking forward to seeing what games they were going to come out with, so I wrote, I wrote most of them down, or the ones that stood out to me. Um, I think it's called The Order 1886. Now I don't even know if I wrote that down correctly. Looks interesting. At first, I was thinking, man, not a, a period piece. I'm not really a fan of period pieces, but it went into a different direction with the, the brief action sequence. So I keep my eyes, my ears open for that one. Um, not not on my radar, but it did look a little bit interesting. Infamous Second Son looks raw. I'm a big Infamous fan. Infamous 1 and 2 was tight, and this looks like this might be better than the first two, like I said about um, Arkham Origins. But yeah, it looks pretty tight. Um, the first trailer I had seen didn't go as much in the depth with the characters, with the brothers and all of that. So, <laughs> the brothers. The brothers, they are brothers by blood. Not, anyway. Um, and so, it, it, it let a little bit more of the story out, more of the gameplay. And it looks fun. It looks really clean, too. The graphics look better than the first two. So, that should be good. Quantic Dreams, the Dark Sorcerer, uh, finally see who that old bald dude with the white hair in the back, who he is, and um, I was when I was watching and I was like, man, these graphics look really good, but I'm not really into sorcery, so I don't really think this would be a game I'll be uh, picking up, because I don't know, it was just some crazy stuff with all this ooh, ooh, and magic and all that, I'm like, man, what is going on? Then, well, if you haven't seen the trailer yet, Go watch it or pause it or stop this video. But, spoiler alert, at least for the trailer. Then you find out that he's on the set. It's all the green screen and it turned out to be a funny scene. 
So now I have no idea what that game is about. So I'm more interested in Quantic Dream. Again, that's a really good company. Uh, so, yeah, I'm intrigued. But I was wondering who that bald dude with that white hair in the back was. So now I see it's him. So we'll see what he's up to and what he's doing. Uh, so then after that, they focus on Sony's new teams. Um, out, of, out of those games, Outlast. Looks like that could potentially be a terrifying game. I like scary games, so I keep my, my eyes open for that one. Um, Our World is back. I never was really that into Our World, but you know that's one of the classics from the PlayStation. Also, Blizzard's Diablo 3. Um, that's another game I wasn't really into coming up. Then they got into Square Enix, however you say it, Final Fantasy Versus 13, and Actually, I wasn't sure if this was one game or two different games um, uh, that they showed. I, I wasn't really sure because it showed two different titles. But, you know, the Final Fantasy games are always visually appealing. They don't personally personally keep my attention. Um, the trailer didn't keep my attention. It started off kind of long and drag, and it, it was in a different language. And um, then it just went to, to me what felt like just some chaotic fight scenes. Um, so, I don't really know if people still like and play Final Fantasy. Again, I'm never was really into it, so I don't know. Then they show Kingdom Hearts 3, which felt like waiting on the detox. And then it's uh, Dr. Dre's detox, and then it says still in development. So I'm like, man, I don't know if that game will ever come out. But I know that game has a huge following. Twitter was pretty excited about seeing that. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Uh, I hate to do this, but Assassin's Creed, uh, that, that presentation was poor. And I felt bad for the guy up there. Um, just had his head down. And I, it probably wasn't his fault. You know, he was just trying to play the game. And that's I couldn't imagine having all those eyeballs looking at me while the game was freezing. So I felt bad. He was probably sweating. Um, but the freezing aside, Assassin's Creed is just not my cup of tea. doesn't do it for me. Um, I played some of the first one, didn't like it. I played all the way through the second one and found myself bored at different parts. Some of the, some of it was interesting. And then I seen the other ones; they all seemed too similar. And then I tried to play Assassin, <clears throat> excuse me, Assassin's Creed Three, and it was it was just boring to me. You know, I hate to put it like that, but it was just boring. A uh, couple of tweets I saw: somebody said Assassin's Creed always makes me think I would like it with the trailers, and then I don't. Uh, yeah, that's how I kind of feel. The graphics always look good on the trailer, then don't enjoy the game. And somebody else said they added a new free, free uh, feature to Assassin's Creed. How awesome. I was like, yeah, <laughs> that was a poor presentation. But, you know, hopefully they get that ironed out. Watch Dogs, mm, not really that interested. <clears throat> I've seen the trailers, they look similar. Um... The two trailers I've seen, not really that interested. That may be something I'll check out down the line, but not on my radar right now. 2K14, it should be, it should be good, you know. Uh, NBA 2K14, following in the footsteps of the last few games that were, you know, remarkable. Uh, but I would have to say the facial expressions look kind of odd, you know. I'm thinking that's something that will be fixed by October, but. That did, that did get my attention. The facial expressions, like when he was when LeBron was yelling, it looked kind of strange. When he was talking, it, it looked kind of strange too. The um, uh, the game version of him, but uh, and that didn't really show anything else new that they have. So I, I'll expect to be seeing some good stuff coming from Two uh, K. Let's see, but there's the the Elder Scrolls Online. Um, that is a company I don't fool with anymore. Uh, Fallout 3 was great, New Vegas was great, but those games both were glitchy and froze. I played them on PS3. They froze to the point where they were unplayable. I was having to save every few steps, and I said I'll never support another product from them again. And then when, um, when what was it called, <clears throat> Skyrim came out, I saw everybody was excited and running out to get that, you know, even on the PS3. And I was like, man, did y'all not play Fallout? On the PS3, so and then come to find out that game had even worse glitches than Fallout. So 
I wasn't excited about seeing that. If they could fix it and get it to run on, on a PlayStation engine, that would be exciting because they do make great games. They make a big big game big thing games. But mm, nah no nah, man. From from my experiences, that's a no. Mad Max had a very brief trailer, but it was enough to catch my attention, so I uh keep an eye out for that. So then we get to some announcements. The PlayStation 4 supports used games. That's a huge announcement because, yeah, this brought a uh, round of applause and cheers from the crowd. But, yes, yeah, a huge announcement because it was often discussed that the next generation consoles will ban used games. And, yeah, that needless, that nothing else needs to be said. People are happy. They're going to still be able to use, play their used games. That's a huge announcement, a huge win for Sony. Uh, Disc-based games don't need to be connected online to play. And it won't require a check-in login. So those are all announcements that got some laughs and cheers and everything like that. So PlayStation Network and PlayStation Plus, excuse me, the PS Plus membership carries over the PS4. So that is another big plus for anybody on the PS uh, that has a PlayStation uh, membership already for PlayStation Plus. So that is a plus. All right, so now we get to Bungie and Activision. And this is towards the end of the show. So the game Destiny has been getting um, a lot of, a lot of. It has a pretty big buzz right now. Now I'm I'm going to say I disqualify myself because I'm not a big first person shooter fan. So I disqualify myself, you know, disqualify my opinion. Initially, I was intrigued with Destiny. The graphics looked really good. They looked clean. I liked how the presenters were joking with each other during the co-op. But uh, unfortunately, it dragged on a little too long. They were searching through the building. That dragged on. Turned into a shootout that kind of dragged on. And I'm sure this could be really fun playing with friends, you know. But the presentation itself was boring. I felt like it was too long. Um, but the demo presentation aside, it looks like it'll be a popular game. It's getting a lot of love on Twitter. Uh, so I'm, I'm expecting that should be a good game. Two big companies. But again, just based off that presentation, you know, I didn't look like something I want to play. So then we get to the end, and they announced the price. I didn't know what to expect. We all remember the PS3 came out with the astronomical launch price, um, which kind of put itself out of the, the console race, and that's the reason why I bought mine years late. And I was planning on buying a PS4 years late. But they announced that their launch price is going to be $399. Not $599, $399. So this is a really good launch price um, for a system, that, a next generation system for a system that's going to be this powerful. And for me personally, that kind of changes things because I didn't know, again, I didn't know how much it was going to be. But it's going to be coming out um, this holiday season at $399. That's a lot cheaper than I thought it was going to be. So who knows, I may be getting it a lot earlier than I was expecting. So yeah, that's that's not a bad launch price. So just all all together, it was a I felt like it was a really good presentation. I feel like Sony is definitely in the driver's seat, um, especially after Microsoft had a disappointing presentation and they kind of got killed online for that. And they came out with let me check to make sure I believe they came out with their price point today. Uh, let me check real quick. Um. Yeah, they came out with their price, uh, which is going to be $4.99. Um, so, Sony definitely had had a good show. They're winning. I'm excited. And, um, yeah, I, I want to know what everyone else is thinking about, you know, everything that they saw and the things that I said. Um, yeah, I really don't have anything else to say. It's just a good time to be a fan of interactive entertainment right now, a fan of gaming, and definitely a fan of Sony. Um, so yeah, leave your comments below, like, please subscribe, you know, help your boy out. You know, I'm trying, trying to do my thing. Uh, I appreciate you coming by, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.